What up, dudes? Welcome back to the channel. So this video is a little history lesson into a YouTube channel called My Digital Escape. So this little story starts back in 2015, a year where collab channels were booming. A collab channel is a, a group effort. It's a, it's a collection of YouTubers together on, in one space and they make daily videos. So you have like five videos a week usually from these channels. So MDE was a group of teenagers that got together the group was started by a guy called Brian Stars, and they were trying to tap into the success that a channel called Our Second Life was having. So O2L was a group of guys a bit older than the MDE group who had a massive channel at the time. These boys were all living together in California. Some of them had a massive house together. They were posting like five or six videos a week on the channel, getting a massive fan base. Their content was more created to the younger side of YouTube, and they were tapping into the kind of One Direction audience. So like, people that are fans of bands were following them. This is where Brian Stars, the creator of My Digital Escape, comes along and makes an alternative group. So he was targeting the more scene and emo side of YouTube that had nowhere else to go. So the channel consisted of some very small YouTubers at the time. We had Johnny Gilbert, Alex Doremi, Shannon Taylor, Jaden Whale, Jordan, and Kyle. And then of course Brian, the guy that ran the whole thing. So at the time, all these YouTubers lived in different parts of the world and they could never get together to make any collaborations. So they were posting seven videos a week. That's a daily video, which is really good for the YouTube algorithm. Like it's important to post content every day if you want to stay relevant and you want to gain more traction online. So after they started this thing, it started to gain some traction. People were flocking to them. So the videos they were making were very similar to O2L, but they had a more emo spin on it. So if you don't know what emo is, for any of you parents out there, it's people that listen to kind of bands like My Chemical Romance, Fall Out Boy, and maybe Panic of the Disco. So about a year into the channel, Brian decides to get everyone together in California to make a whole range of collaboration videos. I think they were all staying in one apartment. <laughs> it seemed pretty chaotic, but they were getting a lot of stuff done. And this is where the channel starts to blow up. While they were all in this apartment, the videos they were posting started to get a bit more strange. They started posting more sexual content, like they were trying to queer bait quite a lot so they would get two guys kissing in a thumbnail or Johnny and Kyle would get shirtless for the video. Clickbait was getting more mature than the people who were creating it and definitely more mature than the people watching it. So although this was strange, it brought us some beautiful cringe moments. This is so awkward. All right. Yeah, just... <laughs> <laughs> that have inevitably started the downfall of the channel, but we'll get to that later. So in summer of 2014, I was in America. I was traveling on a thing called Warp Tour which is kind of a, a collection of alternative bands that do tour dates in every state in America for like six weeks straight. And it's this huge thing. I was with my friends, Stay Happy, Stay Weird, clothing line. They were allowing me to travel the whole of America for fun and for free. So I was so down to do it. I didn't manage to post really any videos while I was on tour with them because I was so exhausted after each date that I didn't want to sit down and edit anything because the next morning we had to get up and do it again. Like every day we were out there meeting, meeting our viewers, uh, meeting our subscribers and just taking pictures with them and having fun with everyone. And it was, it was exhausting doing that every day. Like when you meet people that it's their only chance to ever meet you, you have to be high energy because you don't want them to feel like when they met you, the one and only time they met you, you didn't want to meet them. So like you have to be high energy when you meet these people. Love your video. <laughs> So every person I met that summer would take a picture with me and their friends would take pictures with me and some people would like vlog the interaction and then all of that content would go up online that night and as a result, myself, Brian Stars, D Fizzy, Johnny Gilbert, Stay Happy Stay Weird Boys, we would all gain massive amounts of subscribers and Instagram followers. I think that summer alone, without posting any videos to my channel, I managed to gain 100,000 new followers on Instagram and a lot of those translated over to YouTube and I got a lot of new subscribers without posting any videos. And I think D Fizzy and Johnny Gilbert managed to gain even more than that. So capitalizing on that emo scene music industry, myself and all those other YouTubers found a way to grow our online accounts massively. Give me some camera time, oh my God. This was the summer right before MD began. That was the first year that YouTubers were allowed on Warp Tour to have their own dedicated tent. And that tent was always covered in people trying to meet these YouTubers. And I was in, my, I was in a tent with, with Dakota and you say happy, say weird tent. So we had our own thing going on, but we equally had massive crowds of people trying to meet us. I think something in Brian's mind kind of clicked. He realized how much money could be made selling merch and going on these tours with YouTubers instead of doing his original thing, which was like band interviews. I think that's how he originally got into Warp Tour. So Brian and Stars have been a part of Warp Tour for years. So in 2015, when MDE was growing at an incredible rate, and they were all making decent money, that's when Brian took all of them on Warp Tour, along with Deep Fizzy and the 
other originals. So that summer, a lot of drama happened with the YouTube guys. And that's when everything started to unravel and then they eventually all got kicked off for the next year of Warped Tour. So as you can guess, just by hanging out with these guys and through the power of association, all those YouTubers were growing at a massive rate. Like I was growing really fast and my content was not that good, but I was still growing through association with the, with the scene crowd. So that's generally how most YouTube groups grow. They just constantly post pictures together, tweet each other, hang out in real life and vlog it. And that's how the audiences combine. It's like a constant collaboration every day just by hanging out, power of association. That's how the vlog squad works. That's how the cloud gang works. That's how phase works. It's all the same. This is what drives collaborative channels is just being in, this, in the same video as another YouTuber on that channel. Their, their audiences will come to the channel. They were basically just drawing in seven different audiences to that one spot and it was just growing so fast. And all of us had a common interest, which was emo music. So after Warp Tour, I go on my own tour with some other YouTubers in Australia and New Zealand for a couple weeks and I get incredibly sick. Then I decide I don't want to capitalize on this audience anymore. I drifted away from email music and found my passion truly lied in traveling. This is around the time the MD called quits and each member went their separate way in a beautifully dramatic turn of events. Lots of drama ensues. I don't want to kind of explain what happened with the drama because I don't like feeding into that. But basically everyone agreed that Brian was kind of exploiting these kids. Like Brian was a lot older than all these guys in the group and he was kind of using that to gain some of their audience. Um, he was trying to appeal to younger people and yeah, the queer baiting and he was making them do stuff which was making them uncomfortable and kissing on camera and stuff like that, which I can understand. They were really young. They didn't want to have to do that for views. And honestly, they didn't need to. They could have kept it completely PG and normal and they would have still grown. Like they didn't need to keep pushing the boundaries because they just liked everyone in the group's personalities. Like they didn't need to do the queer baiting. They didn't need to make out and get naked in thumbnails and stuff. So the channel now, it lies dormant. There's nothing going on there. Nothing's been posted in a couple of years. A lot of the videos got removed. It's kind of sad. I mean, the channel was going to hit a million within the year probably. It all fell apart. I think the collab channels shouldn't exist. I think everyone should do their own thing and collaborate using their own channels, not put everything, all their eggs in one basket channel. So that's how myself and MDE managed to grow together, but separate. We, we both making videos for the same kind of audience. We both had similar interests. We both toured together and that's what helped us both grow. They grew a lot faster than me because I went off and did my own thing. So the reason I'm making this is I wanna go catch up with these guys and see what they're doing now and if they're happy. All right, we've come inside because it is uh, raining outside. So where are these guys now? Like, what do they do now that MDE is no longer a thing? So I've done a bit of research and I just wanted to share what they're up to. Maybe you can check them out. Alex Doremi. What is Alex up to? She's still dating Johnny. She dyed her hair black. She seems very happy and she's still getting hit on by strangers in grocery stores. She's pretty active on the main channel. Her channel is at half a million subscribers, but she is thriving on Instagram. She has over 900,000 followers. She's getting close to a million. Um, I've never really seen growth as fast as her. Johnny started a band called Till Death Do We Part with his friend Jake. The EP Johnny's working on is called We're Gonna Need a Bigger Boat. He just dropped a single called Disappear. Other than that, he's still living in California. He's dating Alex and he, he's, his channel's nearly a million subscribers. Shannon is still active on her YouTube channel. She has 700,000 subscribers. She's got a band now called New Pollution with her friends Carson and Blake. I'm not sure how much music they've released yet, but uh, it seems pretty exciting. She seems very happy. Kyle is doing Twitch full time now and he just got back from a trip to India with uh, his friend Dakota Wint. They were shooting a documentary out there, I think. Kyle has also done two, two extra years of Warp Tour without uh, MTE. You've traveled, we stay happy, we stay weird. And now I, Warp Tour's over, so I don't know what he's gonna do next summer. So Brian hasn't posted anything on his YouTube channel in 10 months and he hasn't tweeted anything since last December which is unusual because his Twitter has 219,000 tweets and he was the most active out of all of them on Twitter. And he just, he just left it. I tried reaching out to him, but he, he didn't really want to tell me anything that he's up to. So I don't know what he's doing. I don't know what Brian's doing at all. I'm sure he's working on some projects still, but uh, he hasn't done anything social media wise in a while. They tried to make an MDE 2.0, but there was a lot of backlash from the old members and it all kind of fell apart. So I don't know what he's working on now. So Jaden changed his name to Parker J and he changed channels from his main channel, his vlogging channel, which had 900,000 subscribers to uh, a gaming channel 
called WTF Parker. It's a Sims gaming channel. It's last uploaded two weeks. He's also been selling beanies and signed cards on his Depop. And that's about all I can figure out about Parker. Um, Jordan. Jordan's very interesting. I didn't know anything about Jordan until I made this video. Jordan's been producing his own music ever since he left MDE and he's found some massive success. One of his videos from February has 10 million views. He mixes cute animation with his like Owl City sound. He also reviews Russian memes. Uh, I didn't really understand that one. <laughs> but I'm happy to see that he's active and he's happy and he's making a lot of stuff. Almost got a million subscribers on his channel as well. And then that's everyone. That's what everyone's up to. <laughs> I don't think the channel should be left to die. I don't think MDE 2.0 is a good idea, but something needs to be done with that channel. I don't know what it what it could be. If you enjoyed this little history lesson, then uh, drop a like, please. And leave a comment. Will you ever subscribe to MDE? Did you ever watch any of their videos? Did you think they were cringy? What did you think? What did you think of them when they were around? And do you follow any of these guys anymore? I follow I follow all of them now. I still follow them all and I'm, I'm very interested in what they're up to now. I like that half of them are pursuing music because that's kind of what they wanted to do originally anyway. I probably won't be making a video like this on the scene industry ever again. I don't think I'll, I'll need to. I don't even know why I made this one, really. But uh, I just wanted to talk about MDE. I don't know. But yeah, curious to hear what you think of them uh, and if you still follow any of them. I left links to all of their channels in the description. I left a link to MDE in the description if you want to check out what this whole thing was. It was a very interesting time and it just didn't last very long. This little book here that I've been working on, I have been making some drawings and they're now for sale if you want to buy prints of any of these things that I drew. I don't know what any of these things are. I've always wanted to sell them and now it's finally ready. So if you want to check out the link in the description, you can go to my my uh, store that sells prints. They're all on there. Everything that I've made is on there. If you like the channel and you want to help support me because I'm not making anything off AdSense anymore. If you want to help support the channel and help, me get, help get me back on the road so I can travel again, please consider supporting it. The reason I'm doing this is because that I don't have to ship these. So a company prints and ships them for me and just takes a small percentage and, and it means that I can draw more and I can travel again. If I'm making money selling my prints, then I'll be able to go back into full-time YouTube, which is what I really want to do. And I haven't been able to do that in a couple of years. So yeah, if you guys want to see more videos, please consider checking the link in the description and uh, getting a print. I mean, you can have a piece of my art in your house if you like. All right, exciting times. Thank you so much for watching. I've been the third eye. Shirts coming soon, by the way. Me and Steph have been working on some shirt designs. They're coming soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>